A process not only requires sufficient chemical drive, it also has to run sufficiently quickly. How can we control the speed, the rate of a process? Welcome to Fiscam Basics. Our topics today, reaction kinetics. How can we describe the rate of a reaction? Thermodynamics is concerned with whether or not a process, such as the oxyhydrogen reaction, can take place at all. That is, whether it has a chemical drive, an affinity, a negative delta G. Thermodynamics discusses which parameters can be changed to increase affinity. If there is no affinity, the reaction will never take place spontaneously. If, on the other hand, there is an affinity, thermodynamics gives a green light signal, so to speak. However, whether the reaction actually takes place at a reasonable rate is a question to be considered by chemical kinetics. Kinetics considers parameters which speed up or slow down a reaction. A process will only run when both sufficient affinity and reasonable rate come together. Let's first define reaction rate. In this graph you see the concentrations of all reactants during N2O5 decomposition over time. The slope of these curves corresponds to the rate of formation of the product or rate of decomposition of the reactant. For example, after 300 seconds the rate of decomposition of the reactants is negative 18 micromoles per liter and second and the rate of formation of oxygen 9 micromoles per liter per second. After dividing these numbers by the respective stoichiometric coefficients we end up with a reaction rate R which is the same for all reactants in our case R equals 9 micromoles per liter and second. The unit of the reaction rate is always concentration over time, that is mole per liter and second or pascals per minute. Reaction rate is controlled by a number of parameters. These are in particular temperature, catalyst, in heterogeneous reactions the phase boundary, the solvent and the concentration of the reactants. The dependence on the concentrations of the reactants is particularly important. For this reason, all other variables are combined to form a so-called rate constant K. The resulting equation, reaction rate R at the function of the concentrations of the reactants, is the so-called rate law. Often, but not always, the rate law is of this type. The exponent of the concentration is called order. The order of a reaction describes how sensitive the reaction rate does change with concentration. The order of a reaction has a strong influence on the concentration time relationship. In general, the order of a reaction cannot be predicted. For example, it has been found experimentally that the decomposition of N2O5 is first order, while the decomposition of NO2, at first glance a very similar reaction, is second order. In a zeroes order reaction, the reaction rate does not depend on the concentration at all. Many biological reactions are zeroes order, like the enzymatic decomposition of ethanol to acid aldehyde. This water model can be used to illustrate the kinetics of a reaction. The liquid level of bathtub 1 corresponds to the concentration of the reactant. The level of bathtub 2 corresponds to the concentration of the product. The reaction now proceeds in such a way that water is transferred from bathtub 1 to bathtub 2 with the vessel. The size of the vessel corresponds to the rate constant K and the amount of water that is transferred per second corresponds to the reaction rate. Especially in the case of a zero order reaction, the water is always transported with a vessel of the same volume so that the reaction rate is constant. In a first order reaction, the vessel is a pipette, the fill level of which depends on the liquid level of bathtub 1. 
The change of concentration with time is also called the integrated rate law. For a zero zero order reaction, it is A equals A naught minus K times T. An important parameter to specify a reaction is the half-life. During a zero order reaction, the half-life becomes shorter and is related to the rate constant in this way. You can also tell the order of a reaction by the unit of the rate constant. For a zero order reaction, the unit is moles per liter and second. Here we see a compilation of the equations that hold for a first order reaction. The integrated rate law corresponds to an exponential function. The reaction rate is proportional to concentration, the half-life is constant here and directly linked to the rate constant. The unit of the rate constant is 1 over second. We can linearize the integrated rate law by plotting the logarithm of concentration versus time. These are the kinetic equations for a second order reaction. The reaction rate is proportional to the square of the concentration. The integrated rate law is a bit more complicated. The half-life becomes longer and longer over time and the unit of the rate constant is liters per mole and second. This slide summarizes important kinetic equations for the simple process A goes to P. In the last line you will find the corresponding equations for a process A plus B goes to P with an overall order of 2. What happens microscopically in a chemical reaction? This question is answered by the so-called reaction profile. Let's take the SN2 reaction of bromomethane with OH- ions as an example. During the reaction, the atoms of the reactants rearrange in space. This geometric rearrangement is described by the x-coordinate of the profile, the reaction coordinate. The potential energy is plotted on the ordinate. During the reaction, bonds are stretched and split, other bonds are formed. The potential energy changes during the reaction and goes through a maximum. The maximum, the most energetic configuration on the way from the reactant to the product, we call the activated complex or transition state and it is marked with a double dagger. The energy difference between the reactant and the transition state is called the activation energy. The transition state and the activation energy do have a strong influence on the rate of a process. Even an exothermic reaction, as shown here, initially requires energy so that it gets started, get it over the hump, so to speak. This temperature, thermal energy of the reactants play a major role in kinetics. Here we see the kinetic data of the hydrolysis of sucrose into glucose and fructose for different temperatures. The rate constant increases strongly with temperature. Nearly every reaction shows this behavior and Van Hoff tried to quantify it. Van Hoff's rule states that a 10 centigrade increase in temperature about doubles the reaction rate. Svante Arrhenius expressed the dependence of K with temperature in the famous equation named after him. The Arrhenius equation contains two kinetic parameters, namely the activation energy E sub A, which we already know from the reaction profile, and the frequency factor A, also called pre-exponential factor, which corresponds to the limit value of the rate constant for an infinitely high temperature. We can determine the Arrhenius parameters from our experimental data if we plot the logarithm of the rate constants against the reciprocal of the absolute temperature. This is called the Arrhenius plot. We get the activation energy from the slope of the resulting straight line, the frequency factor from the intercept. If we know the activation energy, we can also use the Arrhenius equation to calculate rate constants at any temperature. The influence of the transition state on the reaction rate was quantified in depth by Henry Eyring. According to Eyring, the reaction rate is primarily determined by the difference in stability between the reactant and the transition state by delta G double decker, the Gibbs free energy of activation. Any action that reduces delta G double decker speeds up the reaction. 
For example, a catalyst works in such a way that the reaction proceeds via a different, often more complicated path with a smaller activation energy. The iron theory can also be used to quantify the influence of the solvent and the influence of ionic strengths on reaction rate. Let's summarize. The concentration of the reactant can act on the reaction rate in different ways. This is quantified by the reaction order. Depending on the reaction order, there are different rate laws, concentration, time functions and half-lives. A reaction can be microscopically illustrated by the reaction profile. Its maximum, the transition state, is relevant for the reaction rate. With the Arrhenius equation, we can quantify the influence of temperature on the reaction rate. We obtain the kinetic parameters of activation energy and frequency factor by evaluating the data using the Arrhenius plot. If we know the parameters, we can determine rate constants, conversion rates and reaction times for any temperature. Influences on reaction rate by catalysts, solvents and ionic strengths may be quantified by Eyring's transition state theory. More information about the topic you'll find in the book and in the lecture. Thanks for watching.